anybody seen my book, A Course in Mind Power? A couple people. It's kind of a, um, not like a typical how-to book. It was based on a lot of uh, experiences that I've actually had. So it's, it's very experiential, and I'm giving um, a lot of information in there about things that I actually did to get different kind of results that are kind of, uh, you know, spooky to some people. Um, what this presentation is about is it's related to some of these mind power kind of concepts, but it really goes down to the fundamental basis of a lot of people want to talk about psychic abilities, psychic power, tapping into the collective, the matrix, the Akashic records, whatever you want to call it, the ethers, to basically download information. And there's one common denominator between every single method of doing that that a lot of people talk about, whether they're using some type of divination method, whether it's remote viewing, whether it's whatever it is. It's even how synchronicity works, all operates by the exact same uh, process. So what I'm going to do is go through <clears throat> just a little framework to kind of give a little foundation to just thinking in terms of, you know, what we think we know, what we don't. In the case, Ingo Swan was one of the primary developers. Uh, he has a set of books called um, Secrets of Power. He wrote many books. Uh, he was a very profound individual in terms of how he thought and how he analyzed things and how language is very important to understand that the words that we're speaking and what they actually mean. And one of the things that he said was that the first key to power is to expand your frame of reference. That's what this presentation is going to do in regards to how the subconscious mind processes information from the collective and how the body translates it, the physical body translates it to something that you can actually see uh, with your, you know, see with your eyes, you can hold it with your hands, and it's a way to translate it into something tangible. So I only have one slide to go over the mind versus brain, just to kind of make a point of where I'm coming from on this. And it's basically this, that the brain is like the TV, but the TV is not the information and the signals that it's receiving, or a transceiver, where it, where, where it could be transmitting. The brain is just a physical device. Your memories don't even store there. That's not what the brain's uh, function or role is. That's the physical device, but the information itself is something on the intangible realm. But we can make it very tangible, applying some of the concepts that I'm going to be going through uh, in this presentation. And what the ideomotor effect is, is that it's a psychological phenomenon wherein a subject makes motions unconsciously. As in reflexive responses to pain, the body sometimes reacts reflexively to ideas alone without the per person consciously deciding to take action, just, just automatically. And for instance, tears are produced by the body unconsciously in reaction to the emotion of sadness. So for example, if, um, if there's a certain tension in your arm, let's say it's a tension of maybe like eight or something, and if you tense it even more than relax, it might drop to like a seven or a six. And that's basically what PMR, progressive muscle relaxation, is developed by Edmund Jacobson. And it's a very uh, simple, very effective um, exercise to get the tensions out of the muscles. And that's going to be um, coming up here a little bit later because it's a very, very important concept that can be applied to actually clear a lot of those subconscious things out of us so that we're more clear on raw data that we are interpreting from uh, the collective, supermind, matrix, whatever you want to call it. And after a lot of work, finally, when electrodes were fixed over a bicep, and I saw that reference, but in one of the books, I saw that they actually took an electrode and inserted it into the muscle, maybe a few millimeters or something. And um, just by imagining that the arm was moving, then they would start getting responses on the meter. Uh, this picture right here is kind of hard to see, but there's very little information out there on the neurovoltmeter in the original circuit. But this is just kind of a glance of kind of what, what the main um, unit looks like. And this is out of the American Journal of uh, Psychology back in uh, 1939. Uh, and the journal article is called Neurovoltmeter uh, by Edmund Jacobson. This is a basic little circuit, which I'm not going to get into. Um, but it's there for reference. If you look online for Neurovoltmeter, uh, you'll find some of the references. You can at least get the free abstracts if you're interested in looking at this kind of circuit. And, you know, there's probably a lot more sophisticated ways to do this kind of thing these days, but this is where, where it came from. If you stress the mind, don't your muscles kind of stress? And if you stress the muscles, it stresses the mind. So it's all, it's all these reversible processes. But the point is, is that any of the intention in the mind always correlates to tension in the muscle. 
I've very, been very open at some of the panel discussions and, and so forth that this is basically a um, conference about raising consciousness camouflaged as an energy conference. 